There isn't a person in this world that I could tell you that I dislike because I love everybody. I would do anything that you would ask me to do to help you to get in shape. And I tell you, before I meet my maker, I certainly would love to come where you are. Thank you so much, Ernestine, for agreeing to talk to me. I just think this is absolutely amazing to actually speak to you live. I'm just so bowled over. And just, I know your story. Um, many people do. They've probably been living under a rock if they don't know your story. But I, I know, just to start off with, you're the oldest living female competitive bodybuilding. Or you weren't, you once were, weren't you? Because I yeah. believe you're not competing now. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you got to everyone's attention. So you were telling me about your sister and being in the hospital. Okay. So uh, she, was, she had her head on my lap and she said, I want you to promise that you will continue what we started. We want to help as many people as we can to live a healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle by first prayer. Because you need prayer. You can't do anything without prayer. And then they have to learn to eat correctly. Get out and walk and then to lift weights. These are the things that must be done. She said, do you promise you would do that? So I told her, yes. So I gave her my pinky finger and I put it in hers and she laid back down on my lap. So finally, when we got to the hospital, I said, do you want me to get a wheelchair? She says, no, I'll walk in. She walked in. And they said, what's wrong? And she explained to them. So they took her immediately in the back. She was back there about 15 minutes. They came out and they told my parents, my sister and me, that Velvet had a brain aneurysm and it had already burst. The water that she felt that was running in her ears, that was the blood that was from aneurysm bursting. And then all of the other symptoms, the headaches and all of that, was due to that aneurysm. And they said there isn't much we can do for her. I had begun to scream and cry. And then I said, now I don't have anyone. What am I going to do? My baby sister said, you have me. I said, yes, I love you very much. But that's not what I want right now. I love you. Don't think I don't because I do. So I went in and I looked. And there, velvet had expired. And wow. I ran around the hospital. I just didn't know what to do with myself. Gosh, I cried. I went home and I hated everything. I hated God because I couldn't understand how he could take such a good person away and leave me when I wasn't a good person like she was. And then I looked around at other people and I said, and he's allowed all of these other people to live. And they took my sister Velvet from me. Well, I went in the house and I didn't come out. I, as I said, I was the meanest, ugliest person that you'd ever want to meet. And each night I would go to bed. I would cry. I would cry. During the day, I cried. It wasn't much anyone could do for me. But one particular night, I went to sleep. And I was awakened. 
And it was Velvet who had awakened me. And she says, Teeny, you're not doing what I asked you to do. I asked you to continue what we were doing and to help as many people as we can to live this healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle. Do you promise you'll get up and do it? I looked around the room. There was not anyone in the room with me. And I laid back down. And then in the next few minutes, she came back to me. And she said the same thing. And I said to her, I will try to do what you have asked me to do. And she was very happy about that. And I knew just what I was going to do. I was going to do what I promised Velvet. So I went back to the gym. And there was Raymond Day, who Velvet and I had trained with. He said, Ernie, you coming back to train? I said, yes, I am. So I came back and I trained with him. And after I trained with him, he said, Ernie, I'm going to send your picture to Ebony Magazine. And I'm going to see if they will accept your picture and have you in their magazine. Well, he took my picture. He sent it to Ebony Magazine. They loved what they saw. I was put in their magazine. And oh, I got so many calls and write-ups from me being in that so, magazine. So how old were you then, Ernestine? I was 62 years of age. I can show you the picture if you want to see it. Yeah, we'll do that um, after. Yeah, we'll um, do it after because we just keep a, you would a like to see going. Because, yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you, so you were 62 when you, you went know, in Ebony magazine. magazine. When I went back. You were kind of a p pioneer because you were the first woman, older woman, to kind of be what we would call now a fitness influencer. And what struck me was, I thought, you're the pioneer, you were the first to do it. But now there's lo lots of women in their 60s, 70s, 80s. That there's one quite famous lady, Joan MacDonald, and I've had another lady onto my channel who's in, my, in her 70s, um, who, who's just fantastic. She's really great. And I wondered... Do you, why why is that do you think that we're getting more and more older women wanting to be a role model want, wanting to be Joan McDonald's been in um I think it's women's health magazine so I wondered you know what do you think about that I think everyone the senior ladies have decided they that they want to live long. They want to be healthy. And in order to do all of this, you must, must exercise, eat healthy, and get there and, and really walk, run. I've done about approximately, oh God, 20 marathons. And, and then I've done, uh, I don't know how many half marathons. 5Ks, 10Ks. Uh, I just enjoy doing all of this. And my ministry is to help people to live that healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle. At least 40 women who come to my nine o'clock class. I have about 27 to 30 women who come to my a seven o'clock class. I have people that I take out walking. I have a community walk. I have 30 and 
and I have my Saturday Zoom class. All of these things I do because I want to help people. I'm just a personal trainer. I do these things. It's not for me to show off. It's for me to help others. They wanted me to come to New York. I went to New York. And then they called me Granny Six Packs there because they were so see my abs. I've done so many television shows. I've done um guard the view. I've That's when I was on the view. I've seen you on a lot of TV shows and it's kind of how I got to know you because I'd sort of watch sort of content online, read. You've even been in the British newspapers here and then on television here as well. So I got to, I got to know about you from television and I just thought, wow, she is absolutely amazing. And it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? Because people would say sort of inspiring. And, and one of the things I noticed you say, I'd love you to sort of tell me more about that and, you know, what it means is you say determined, dedicated, disciplined to be fit. And I wear that on all of my clothes. If I have garments that I can wear it up all the way across, I do that. But if you want to do something, you have to make up your mind and say, I am going to do this no matter what. No matter what happens. Make up your mind that this is what you want to do. You've seen my book. No matter how badly I may feel in the morning, I'm going to that gym because I'm determined to do it and to help others. And I am dedicated to do that, to help people. It's not just for me to show off. It's for me to help others. I love everybody. There isn't a person in this world that I could tell you that I dislike because I love everybody. I would do anything that you would ask me to do to help you to get in shape. And I tell you, before I meet my maker, I certainly would love to come where you are. I would love that. You don't know. There is there any way that I could get there? You can come anytime you like, Ernestine, and come come over to England. We love you here. We absolutely love you. Honestly, you'd get a warm welcome. You can come and stay with me. I live in the southwest of England. Honestly, it would be amazing. We'll have to see. We we need to sort it out, don't we? We'll have a proper meetup face to face. But you know what? Here's what here's how I get to all the places that I go. I went to Rome. See, the people pay for me to come there. Yeah. I don't uh, they pay for me to come there. They have a place for me to you know, sleep. They see that um, I have my food and I don't travel alone. I always have someone to travel with me because of my age. And if you could get a group to support and have me to come there, oh, would I not love that? Ooh. We've got. We need to. Well, we'll we'll sort something. It. We'll try and work on it. We'll work on it, won't we? If where yes. there's a will, there's a way. What did you say? Where there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. There's a way. And <laughs> see, you can talk with uh, Yanni. Yanni knows how to get all of this together for me to yeah. travel. Oh my lord! Mm -hmm. And and I would just love it. But um, then I want to tell you that uh, after my sister died, then um, I started working out with Yanni after um, Ray had worked with yeah. me. He, he introduced me to Yanni. 
and I went to his show and I was sitting there and Yanni saw me sitting there and he came out and he said, Miss, would you like to present my trophies to the winners? I said, what? He said, yes. He said, come up on the stage. And I had on this one piece white suit and I strutted on that stage. And then <laughs> I gave out those trophies and I was, people just couldn't believe that I was the age that I was. So Yanni started training me at the age of 71. It took him seven months to get me into shape. Then he said, now, you are ready to compete in my bodybuilding show. And well, I could say that seven months isn't very long, is it? That's no, it really isn't impressive. because so because you must I have been, been training already... before. See, I had been training before, and all mm. I had to do was do the rest. But I don't lift as heavy as I do now. But if I were to do a show, well, can you see? Can you see? I don't know whether you can or not. Yeah. We, so, yes, let's just have a look. That is, you are incredibly muscular. And just because some people watching this wouldn't realise that it's actually really hard to put on muscle, isn't it? As you get older, it's much harder than it is for a younger person. And then I said to Yanni when he started training me, I said, I do not want to look like a man. I don't want big muscles. I don't want those big legs and all of that stuff that I see other ladies with. I know they are beautiful, but that's not what I want. He said, Ernie, you do not have to worry about that because you do not have that testosterone. And what you will do you will be natural. And what other ladies see, they too will know that they can achieve the same thing. And that is what he did. I weighed 118 pounds and had the muscle that I needed. Of course, if I had to uh, really uh, compete again, I would lift like I was doing. But what I'm doing, I'm training people and trying to keep myself in shape. Lift that up again, baby. I just want to see if you can see my muscles. I don't know. Really... I mean, that is amazing, Ernestine. For any woman of any age, you look incredible. And it's, it's just... Yeah. I I would love to know. Yeah, you know, that is. Now you can oh, see I it. love this. It's just amazing. It's so beautiful. She is. She's and gorgeous it, in person. What would you say to someone if they're somebody who wants to get in the shape like you, and they're like e either in their sixties, seventies, or eighties? What what advice would you give? Okay, what I tell people because I have people that I have trained. Really, really, look. First of all, we start off slow. With my ladies, when they come to me, they're in their 60s. So in the immediately, I would not have them lifting 25, 30 pound weights. I start them off with maybe five or 10 pound weights. And as the time goes on, we raise it higher and higher. Then I tell them how to eat. They must eat healthy. And not only that, they have to get out and do some cardio. And all of this has to be done within, you do it. I train my people three days, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And the other days, I take them out walking or running because I was a runner, but I don't run now. And all of this 
will get them into shape. Believe you me, it will do it if they are determined and if they're dedicated and if they're disciplined. That will definitely do it. So and I tell you, when you say eating healthy, that's quite confusing for some people. What what do you mean by that? Because I think there's a lot of bad information or conflicting information, isn't there? Well, here's the way that I eat. Now, I awaken in the morning after I've had my devotions and everything. Then I come down and eat. I drink liquid eggs. That's my protein. I must have protein. I drink that three to four times a day. I eat oatmeal. Then I will also eat walnuts. Then later on during the day, I come back again and then I eat tuna fish, broccoli, rice, and of course I will I will drink my egg whites with that. The next time I will eat chicken. And I will eat another vegetable and uh, sweet potatoes. The meats that I eat are chicken and tuna fish. And then at one time, they used to say that not to eat too much fruit because fruit has a lot of sugar. But then I found something different which I use, and it's not a supplement. It is food. It's called Juice Plus. Have you heard of Juice Plus? No, I've never heard of that. So what is that? Donald's upstairs. She's going to bring my Juice Plus. Oh, fantastic. And I four capsules a day. It has everything in it. It's food, not a supplement. Oh. Juice plus. Wait a Hold that up. Yes. Oh, fantastic. One is vegetable. So they're like supplements that have got all the They're not supplements. They're not supplements. They're not no. supplements. What they are is their nutrition. Yeah. They're basically there during the juicing process, all of the water. Whoops, I lost one. Sorry. All of the Good. water, the sugar, and the salt is taken out of it. And what this wonderful Well, you look amazing on it, Ernestine. Absolutely this is amazing. The fruit. What you get oh. is a capsule. Yeah. So like like the space people use, this is the yeah. fruit one. You get a capsule and it's fruit. It's all yeah. nutrient. So it's it's tech it's real nutrients. So this is what she takes and because we don't eat enough vitamins and we don't eat enough vegetables and fruits. So this yeah. is fruit and vegetables. Oh you would in a in a sort of tablet. Do you weigh your food out? Huh? Do you weigh your food? No, because I, I've been doing it so long, I know just what it looks like in the beginning I did, but I don't mm. now. If you want something good, you should try that. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's getting interested in, in living a longer, healthier life aren't they? And you're, you're like the epitome of that, Ernestine, aren't you? What tips would you give to live a longer, healthier life? 
Well, first of all, like I was saying to you, you've got to eat correctly. People eat all this wrong food and it isn't, it really isn't good for, for them to eat this wrong food. And I try to eat the correct way and the correct amount of food and get out and exercise honestly. And then don't forget, you've got to pray. All of this comes in handy. You've got to do all of this. I don't care if it's raining. I don't say be out there in a blizzard, but I have the garments to wear, to go out and walk and run each day. I do that. You want to keep your system open because most people have trouble with keeping their system open. They sometimes can't even have an, uh, your bowels or all of that. That's very mm -hmm. important. I eat oatmeal, pineapple, canned in its own juice. I would have chopped walnuts and then drink my liquid egg whites. My next meal would be tuna in water, black beans cooked tan or brown rice and my eggs. The next meal would be chicken breasts, no skin, roasted or baked, romaine lettuce chopped, carrot, celery. The next meal would be my egg whites again, tuna in water, the black beans again and tan or brown rice. And then my last meal would be my egg whites, chicken breast, no skin, broccoli, chopped, and lima beans. That's how I would eat. That's the diet that Yanni had fixed for me. And then we found out that we needed to use the uh, Juice Plus. And with that Juice Plus, I feel so, so much better. So much better. I really do. And it's, again, it's not a supplement. It's food. Okay. Yeah. That sounds absolutely incredible that you, you feel so good. And because I think about it, and I think my mother, she's 80, She's kind of nowhere near on your level of fitness and she's, she's not all that mobile. And so I sort of think to myself, you know, I want to keep going the way that I am so that when I reach your age, I want to be like you. You know, I want to be like you now, you know, now at this age, that's that was my goal. Yes, when yes. I saw you online, I sort of thought, well, I want to compete in shows. And I've done that. I've competed in shows. And, um, you know, I did think before I saw you that perhaps I was too old. In my 50s, I was too old. Of course, I'm not. That's it's not an age at all. But I, I just think, you know, I want to be like you now. And then when I get older, you've given me this new idea of what aging is about because for many people what aging is about it's kind of going downhill isn't it and not not having your fitness you know maybe losing your mind a little bit not having your fitness not having a good life but you're just a fantastic sort of role model for people you know not cutting not cutting you off you don't want to sit all day watching television just moving from seat to seat watching television. Um, it's nice to watch it, but you, you, you've got to keep moving. And if you can't get outside steps, walk around your house, even though it may not be big, walk and I'll walk in a circle or do something so that, uh, I can get something going if I can't get out. And then plus I have the equipment here too. But I don't like that uh, stuff. But uh, the, I have the treadmill and and all of that. But I don't particularly. And and Drea will come over and work out. She has treadmill and everything here too, and we'll uh, do that. And we have 
the the bike and the the weights and all. But I just love being out with the people. I really do. It's it's a joy. And uh oh my goodness, the thing about it is oh I'm looking at you and I, I saw that picture of you. You are beautiful. Your picture. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I was in, inspired by you. I've competed in, I think it's oh, about really? five bodybuilding competitions. Look at you. You are beautiful. Thank you. You are simply beautiful. Oh, my God. But my joy comes from training people. I just can't wait to get in the gym and train them. And then I tell them, come in, look nice. Don't just come in anything. Make yourself look nice. Put your lipstick on. I mean, put your earrings on. Put something on and look at yourself in the mirror. That is really a joy. And look at you. You are simply, simply beautiful. I love you. I love you too. And I wonder, just one last question now, because I know we we sort of gone over time a bit, but I'm enjoying talking with you. (laughs) What is it that you love about helping people? Because you you you've got this sort of passion for really helping people get their fitness and, and get in good health, haven't you? Well, some people, I don't let people come to me and say this. Somebody will say to me, one lady said, can you help me with my fat self? I said, don't talk to me like that because I don't define anyone's body that way. What we're going to do is to try to get you as healthy as we possibly can. And you can do it. If you think you want to do this, you have to promise me that you are going to do it. Then they'll sign a paper. And then with them signing the paper, I only get the money from the gym that pays me. When I go out um, on different jobs, that's when I get my other money. But that's not that important to me. I want people to be as healthy and happy as they can be. And it's important. It's very important. I want to promise myself to be strong. I want to love everybody. And that's what I try to do. Forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, nothing to forgive, Ernestine. I, I I just love the way that everything's coming from the heart from you. And uh, God has permitted me to live to be 87 years of age. And I want to tell you this. I was married 65 years, and my husband died four years ago. And when he died, I started, I suffered with, anxiety and this what I just read to you helps me along during the day and so does Drea helps me along through the day and I keep saying I've got to keep going and I don't want to tell fibs to anyone I want them to know the truth about me I do suffer with anxiety but I get out when I go out and walk. I find walking helps and exercise helps with the anxiety. I just can't sit in the house and not do anything. I must get out and walk. I must go to church, all of these things. And I don't mind putting my arms around hugging anyone. So I'm sorry I had to cry on you. You, I, I just love the fact that you, you know, you're showing you, you're not all perfect, which kind of makes you really relatable. That's why people love you, because you're true to yourself, aren't you? And you're honest and you, you know, you, you make people feel 
like you're just like them. I think that's a gift that you've got where you you people can they find you relatable because you didn't have a story of being an athlete or anything until you you got you know over the age of 50 and you wanted to do something about your health and so it feels for everyone else you've made it feel achievable if you work hard if you do what you said which is like be determined dedicated discipline to be fit I I don't know how you find I don't know how you find the discipline to to do it but you have just explained it you've described it a little bit and it's just amazing I just think you're amazing and I'm just so honored to meet you we'll have to do it again we'll meet up in person and thank you Drea to anyone watching Drea is Ernestine's daughter so she's been helping out with the technology and everything else so thank you so much Drea you're welcome she's in the Beyonce video my power also oh yes of course yeah yeah fantastic all right well it's great to meet you guys it's awesome meeting you can't wait to see you in 2024 let me yeah. say this to you before I go beautiful eyes I love to say this I always loved Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey, do you do you know about Audrey Hepburn? Yeah. She always said, for beautiful eyes, always look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, only speak words of kindness. For poise. Walk with the knowledge that you are never, ever alone. Remember that. I will do. Thank you so much, Ernestine. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And I'm sure we'll be meeting again. Yes. Have a great bye day. Bye.